right, we're still on chapter five, thermal energy. We're ready for section two, conduction, convection, and radiation. All right, so there are three ways <clears throat> that thermal energy can transfer from place to place, and that is, of course, conduction, convection, and radiation. So these are the three ways that you can get energy from one place to another. So the first one we're going to talk about is conduction. Conduction is the transfer of thermal energy by collisions between the particles and matter. So the key here is that there has to be collisions. There has to be actual contact between the particles in matter in order for us to actually have conduction occur. So it happens because of particles being in constant random motion. Uh, the key that I think about here is like the domino effect that you have like one knocks over another, knocks over another. So the key here is that we have to have, um, I guess I'm going to write it down here, kind of keyword. You have to have contact. Okay, so make sure that you keep that in mind that there has to be touching. Um, there is no transfer of matter. Matter does not move. So the other thing you have to think of is like, and I think dominoes are an awesome example of this. So you have to keep in mind that, you know, with this, that you have, you know, it's like you have something, it hits something else, it hits something else, but there's no, like, actual movement. So it's like the domino effect. This, this falls onto this, which falls onto this, which falls onto this. So it doesn't actually move places. It's like I slap this thing, it slaps this thing, it slaps until it gets to the other, other end but this object would never move to this spot because there's no actual movement. So a great example of conduction would be like if you have a spoon on a stove. So you sit and you have this hot bowl that's sitting on a stove top. The end of the spoon would get really hot and the particles at the end of the spoon would start heating up and they'd start colliding and they would hit each other and um, the kinetic energy of course of each of the particles because they would start you know bouncing off of each other and one particle would hit another particle which hit another particle which hit another particle which hit another particle and you're getting the point until eventually they hit to the very end of the spoon and then of course you would be a silly willy and you touch the end of the spoon and then you would burn yourself okay so of course conduction is based on what kind of material you have there are good conductors, there are poor conductors. Okay, Solids and liquids, um, things are going to move faster than, the in, than in gases. When we get into chemistry, we'll look at you know the difference of how different materials are set up. But the thing you have to think about is that if we kind of look at different things as far as gases, liquids, and solids just for a minute and kind of, I guess, focus on this and kind of logic. Solids are like really packed tight. So just to kind of give you an idea for basics. So obviously they're going to be good for conduction because they're really close so they have lots of people to hit. Gases are like spread farther apart. So they're not as close together as, as liquid as solids. But they're not, you know, so far apart that they can't touch each other. But then you have a gas, which there's like almost nothing. So obviously it's going to be hard for these to collide because they're not so so close. Versus here, you're getting a little harder to touch. Versus here, they're going to be really easy to touch. So gases, since they're so far apart, it's going to be harder for them to do that domino effect because how do you hit a domino that's really far away? The best conductors are metals, and the reason for that is because metals don't always obey the rules. Metals are kind of special. Metals have these things called um, free-floating electrons. They kind of give themselves a free pass, meaning that, um, you know how we said that, you know, you can't have technically movement? Well, basically, you know, we said that this domino is going to hit this domino, which is going to hit this domino, which is going to hit this domino. What metals do is that they actually have this little, almost like, you can kind of think about it like they almost have like a little, uh, like, 
I don't know, slingshot or something, and they actually can go boom, 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 and just kind of like hit things around them. So they don't actually move, but they actually have the ability to kind of fling their electrons because they have this movement that allows for them to go out and hit things that aren't even around them. So they can move easily throughout the metals and go and make more collisions. And so that was why they are such good conductors because they have these free floating electrons. So that's something you definitely need to know that it's because of the electrons that give these metals their heat conductors. So we probably all know that heat, that metals are great conductors, but the reason for these are because of these, these free floating electrons that they have. Okay, next one is convection. Um, you have possibly some stoves that are convection stoves. Um, a lot of our heating systems are convection um, heating systems. Basically, this is the transfer of thermal energy in a fluid. Now, first of all, let's define right here. I have it down here. Fluids are liquids and gases. Okay. And simply all they do is take warmer fluid and move it to cooler fluid. Just basically, it's the transfer of fluid from place to place, going from warmer to cooler. cooler. That's all convection is. So you just basically take warmer, move it to a place of cooler, and that's what convection currents do. So basically what happens is, is that as the particles basically move faster, they spread farther apart, and basically that fluid basically expands as its temperature increases. And when the fluid basically expands, its volume increases, so it becomes larger. But you gotta remember that its mass doesn't change. And so what happens is, is that it actually becomes more dense. So what we gotta think about is that, you know, right now you have, we start off with, you know, maybe like a liquid that its particles are really close together okay alright and then what happens is, is that when you heat it up okay they spread farther apart okay so become less dense right there's more area in here and so because they have less they're less dense what happens is is that they're actually going to rise up okay and so that's going to cause them to move up because if they're less dense they're not going to stay down because they're not as heavy per se they don't have that density and so that's going to make it so that that warmer air is going to move up and that cooler air is going to stay down causing a current to occur so that's why hot air rises because this is your hot air this is your cold air and so that's the general idea This is also how the Earth works. You've got, you know, of course, the nice equator, which we know is hot. Okay, and so that hot air moves up and moves towards that, you know, nice north or south pole, which is cold. And so, you know, that hot air, or, you know, we have the hot air, the cold air, and so that hot air, or the cold air, I guess. Um, is going to expand and you know you get these natural convection currents going and so that's kind of the problem that we're experiencing with global, global warming and stuff is that it's affecting these convection currents and it's messing around with these convection currents okay some comparison between conduction versus convection okay first of all that remember that conduction um, that matter doesn't move okay so there's no transfer of matter, it doesn't move, it stays placed. So key there is no movement. Oops, should be a V, not an M. No movement. Okay. Um, with conduction, it works really well in solids, the best. Um, liquids would be second, and not so well in gases. Convection, however, well, however, um, there's going to be a transfer of matter. So matter is actually going to move. Um, so there is movement. And this is the transfer of fluids. So this works really well in liquids and gases. 
Now the key thing is here that it does also involve conduction. So there is particle bombardment, there is particle movement. So keep that in mind. That convection also does include conduction. Last but not least, something that we could look forward to in the gloomy weather, good old Indiana that we miss, radiation. Now, radiation is the transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves. And we'll talk more about electromagnetic waves when we get to the very end of this nine weeks. Electromagnetic waves are just simply the waves from the sun. You can put it that way. Um, these waves can travel through space even when no matter is present. So radiation does not need matter. Um, keep in mind that in order for us to do conduction or convection, we need matter. So those two are out completely. But radiation, you don't need matter. So you can, you know, we could travel through space, which space is a vacuum. There's, there's no matter present. So you know, how do we get things from the sun to down to earth? Well, we have these electromagnetic waves or we have radiation. So energy that's transferred by radiation is often called radiant energy. So when radiation strikes the material, some of it is absorbed, some of it's reflected, and some of it's transmitted. So notice here, they're showing you in this nice picture that you have reflection, you have it absorbed, and you have it transmitted. And you guys know this. I mean, think about like on a hot day, you get, you know, absorbed, um, some of it bounces off, you get that shininess where you look in on bright light, um, it's transmitted through, um, it goes through like a windshield in your car, things like that. Um, and the amount of, of energy or radiant energy that's transmitted depends on what kind of materials you have. And again, this is kind of common sense stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Materials that are light colored are going to reflect more energy, whereas things that are dark colored are going to absorb more energy. And then, of course, if you're absorbing radiant energy, what's going to happen is that the overall thermal energy of the material is going to increase, basically meaning that the temperature is going to go up. And again, we know that. We have a black material in a car. It's been sitting out in the hot sun for a while, meaning that it's absorbing lots of that radiant energy. What's going to happen? It's going to feel a little warm when you sit down. Radi uh, radiation is most important in gases. Gases don't do very well um, with conduction, obviously, because they can't, you know, have that domino effect. And, I mean, it does do convection, but really, for the most part, radiation is, is definitely most important in gases. Radiation doesn't work very well in liquids or solids. Um, it's kind of the idea of, all right, if we think about it this way, a little diagram here. You're trying to shoot a laser down through something. Okay, a gas has lots of free space, right? So it's going to be able to shoot straight through. Well, sorry. Whereas, you know, think about this. Gases have lots of space. Liquids are closer together. Solids are even more closer. So that laser, that whatever you're shooting through, in this case our radiant energy, it's not going to have a lot of room the closer those particles together. So solids are definitely not going to have a lot of room for it to get through or travel through the space. Liquids are going to have eh, some room, but gases will have lots of room. So they're going to be able to get through this space versus you know some of the other things. Um, some molecules will take in that radiant energy and it'll cause them to like break apart. Some of them will you know in, you know bounce it off just depends on the different molecules. Um, and like we said, usually it'll go through gases better than solids or liquids. Um, it travels through the spaces. Um, and that's really kind of the big point there. Okay, just some ideas here. We've talked about this. Insulators 
Um, a material in which heat flows slowly. Okay. Um, wood, some plastics, fiberglass, air, those are all good things to use as insulators. Materials such as metals that we talked about earlier as conductors, obviously these are going to make poor insulators. Gases such as air are usually much better insulators than solids or liquids. Um, some types of insulators are things that contain trap pockets of air. That's why a lot of times your jackets, they put material in them, but they leave lots of like poofiness or like pockets of air because air is actually a good insulator um, because it conducts heat poorly. That's why a lot of times they leave your windows, they leave them, you know, with air in between um, or a lot of times they actually suck all the air out of it. Um, a lot of building inf insulation, um, you see this pink stuff, okay? Um, first of all, you want to be very careful because it's fiberglass. Fiberglass is actually little shards of glass. And so what you do with that is that, first of all, it's glass, which glass is a poor insulator. Or not poor insulator, poor conductor, sorry. And so what that glass does is that, first of all, the glass itself is a, is a good insulator. But also what you do is you fluff it up before you put it in the wall and so you have pack pockets of trapped air. And so that creates um, several ways of insulating the building because you have the pockets of trapped air, you have the glass which is a good insulator. And so, you know, by having all those those gaseous regions, you, you know, make it so that you're, uh, you know, keeping your buildings warm and uh, or cool depending on the season that you're in.